morning, everybody. This is Adrian Montgomery with ERP VAR. We're really excited today to talk about predictive lead scoring. I'm joined by Kathy Graham. Kathy, go ahead and say hi. Hello. Nice to see uh, some familiar faces. We'll be, um, this webinar will be between a half hour to an hour, depending on collaboration and questions. We really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to spend with us. Uh, to talk about this um, marketing component. There's uh, so many different ways to use predictive modeling and predictive analysis. And for you CPAs out there in the audience, I'm sure you've used some predictive analysis in business and understanding trends. Um, same thing can go for uh, lead generation and marketing. So we'll uh, dive into all of that shortly here. Uh, first, I want to start out with some housekeeping notes. Uh, if you notice on your webinar pane, we'd like to make this as collaborative as possible. You have a hand button and a question mark button on your uh, webinar pane. If you should have any questions throughout the presentation, uh, we're going to reserve those until the end of the slides. But if you do want to collaborate live uh, by raising your hand, we have kind of a smaller audience today, so we'd be happy to unmute your line if you're comfortable to talk live with us. Um, Kathy and I will be monitoring to see if uh, folks are raising their hand. And it'd be great to get some live collaboration uh, with the audience because this is <clears throat> a more complicated topic than usual from as far, far as marketing is concerned. So there might be um, some questions out there that you have. And if you have questions, then chances are maybe the rest of the audience might have some questions too. So it'd be helpful for them uh, if we get as much participation as possible. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and start it off. Um, I'm up at the top. I love to ski. I like to uh, show um, you know, my personality on these uh, uh, PowerPoints, because PowerPoints can tend to be a little bit dull. I love to ski. I like to just be active. Um, so that's just a little bit about me. And then uh, there's a picture of Kathy uh, at the bottom there. And these are your two speakers today. So Kathy, I'm going to go ahead and let you uh, run with this uh, slide. If you can uh, just uh, go through and introduce us to the audience as far as our experience is concerned. Well, sure. I mean, it's always a journey and, and to find out uh, how we reach in this ERP space with our, our own company, ERP VAR, is we have to take a little look back. And it all started 19 years ago when Sage Software was state of the art at the time, Dave Butler was at the helm, and then they got acquired by Sage, which we then went to Best and had that journey. Um, so I was a channel manager. Um, Adrian had already been out there in the workforce. This was my um, second job out of college. I had worked also as a research assistant doing um, something completely different, but um, Adrian had some uh, previous uh, marketing experience and we both were on the channel manager team working with uh, partners quite closely back then um, helping to devise strategies to help them sell more sage software and a lot of that component even though we were in the sales department um, the struggle the biggest struggle with partners that we found who are um, out there like yourselves trying to sell software or ERP systems now as we call them um, you guys have so much to do to keep your certifications, to maintain your client satisfaction or customer satisfaction. You have so much on your end that we often find that the area where partners need the most help is in the marketing. And if you're lucky enough to have a dedicated marketing person on your staff, you are in uh, the minority. And so our company, after um, going out there from Sage, I went to Avalara, spent time at Intuit, and learned a lot of best practices there. That company is really great, just like Sage was back in the day, of um, just trying to train us to um, help serve our partners. And uh, I learned, and Adrian learned a lot from you, just in all the conversations and learning your struggles. And um, she did work for a reseller, DeRosa Mangold, out of Texas. 
um, cold calling. She was just a superstar cold caller. And, um, you know, you can work that list for so long. And she was sending um, Mike DeRosa out on um, many, many, many appointments. And they were selling and they were winning awards. Um, Mike went off to, what was it, Hawaii or somewhere for the Circle of Excellence one year. And they were a great team. But in the end, Adrian got tired of cold calling. And she says, my, my goodness, there has to be a better way. Um, when the list dries up, you can't just call someone and say, hey, do you want a heart transplant? Um, what's wrong with your business? Let's start that conversation. And let's rip out the guts of your company and put something else in. People don't um, always respond well to those types of cold calling. So um, Adrian really was um, stepped out of her box to look for better ways and started to really embrace inbound marketing. And, you know, we've all shifted over the years. You've been doing business long enough to know that um, back in the day, it was the, the person who got the most business in town was the person with the biggest yellow page ad. And that evolved into uh, companies spending tons of money on very fancy direct mail pieces up to the size of an entire pizza box full of mailing um, material about your company and how you differentiate. Well, you've got the biggest direct mail piece. Um, nowadays, you know, we, we're shifting and uh, actually direct mail is coming back into style because no one's doing it. So you, you, you're able to stand out a little bit cold calling is kind of down the tubes. No one really wants to start engaging in a, a cold call, whether it's um, about painting your house or solar energy. It's just um, often not the right time. So what people are doing with the internet is they're educating themselves and that's how, how marketing has evolved. So the main thing that we help partners focus with at ERPVAR um, is to help you be found on the internet. And we use our website, ERPVAR, as a springboard to boost up whatever your search engine um, goals are. So we act as your microsite to post and push um, material through us, through social media, through all of our, our um, hundreds of participating clients, the, the other um, VARs that are out there trying to do exactly what you're trying to do. We use them to leverage each other. And that's really the spirit of ERPVAR is to take what you find, all the networking that goes on in the trade show community, and um, not just with the resellers, the VARs, people like yourself, the ERP um, resellers, but also the ISVs, the partners who have third-party solutions like V Technologies, APS Merchants, all the third parties you see um, exhibiting at the trade shows you attend. So what we do here at ERP Bar is to take our third parties, we co-host webinars with um, multiple third parties at a time, uh, oftentimes showing how complementary solutions work together in a supply chain management scenario, for instance. And then we also bring you guys, the resellers, into the mix so that you can communicate to your customers when you think there might be something of value with one of the webinars that we're doing. We also give you location pages. We're working very closely nowadays with um, not only Sage partners, Microsoft partners, QuickBooks partners, but also Acumatica. And um, I actually attended the Acumatica show. Adrian was there a few months ago in um, Orlando. And um, we were there with our um, big client, V Technology. And um, we saw a lot of Sage partners. It was like a big Sage reunion. Um, but there were also a lot of people that attended saying, oh my gosh, it's so, it's so great that um, V Technologies is here. Now I have a solution when I move over to Acumatica that I know that I'm comfortable with and that I can sell. And with us at ERPVAR, we see a lot of opportunity because of our HubSpot certification and the fact that Acumatica is really pushing HubSpot. Um, well, we help a lot of our clients with HubSpot and many of the clients we work with are already on HubSpot. So the Acumatica channel is just a nice fix and that's a nice fit for us and what we're doing. And that's um, part of the reason why they're sponsoring this webinar today. 
Uh, well, with that, um, hope this gives you a little background and helps you understand what ERP VAR is all about. We're really trying to take this, um, the spirit of the community and help everyone leverage each other uh, through sharing blogs, through participating in webinars, so that we can lift you up and help you be found on the internet even more so than the efforts that you're doing in-house. And uh, that's, that's the spirit of ERP VAR is, is leveraging the community to work together. And I'm gonna now turn it over to Adrian to talk about what you all came here to learn, which is predictive lead scoring. And thank you for that, Kathy. I just wanna um, clarify something for you. Only a, par a portion of my position over at DeRosa was um, cold calling, but that portion of my position seemed nonsensical to me um at times you know spending a lot of time cold calling out to a list that may or may not have ever heard of DeRosa Mangold um, we'd have a lot of people calling us um, from the internet and those tended to be the best leads I they were like putty in my hands I would love hearing from people that found uh, DeRosa over um, the internet because that meant they were in an active search mode and we closed those so much faster than anyone that I could have reached out with and from a cold call basis. So it just makes made more sense to me um, to develop an inbound marketing strategy where you're getting people who are finding you rather than you trying to go through the weeds finding somebody else. So I just developed this passion for inbound marketing, search engine optimization, social media marketing to get people to come to us. And we actually were able to get four other partners under uh, DeRosa's umbrella to hire me as a sales and marketing uh, person under Mike's umbrella. So um, we all collaborated together and we all worked as partners and um, some people could look at other business partners as potential competitors or some people could look at them as, you know, um, a colleague that you can call on for expertise that might have ideas to share and vice versa. So uh, that's the whole nature of the ERP VAR community is that so that everybody can get together and collaborate and leverage off of each other's expertise because you know it is recommended that you uh, syndicate a blog every day, a new blog every day on your website, but ERP VARs just don't have the resources to do that. So when you combine your expertise with other ERP VARs and share your blogs through other ERP VAR social media profiles, then that just gets you so much more exposure, and then that helps the other ERP VAR because their picture comes up and what do we always want to do? We want to stay in front of the audience. That is so important. So enough of the of our commercial. Um, we didn't intend to go into that, but we, when we're talking about predictive lead scoring, this is relevant because there has to be some way for everyone to pull together a database um, where you can devise a predictive lead scoring strategy. So how do you do that? Well, you have to actively market. You have to have your internal database organized, and that's what we're going to talk about. So what is predictive modeling and what is predictive lead scoring? So let's just review just the basics of predictive modeling. Um, predictive modeling, it leverages statistics, past, um, past history to predict future outcomes. Uh, and it's, if we want to predict the future, we have to apply some type of unknown event, regardless of when it occurred, to predict a future outcome. So um, you, as I said, we do this in all kinds of different industries and the same thing can be said for predictive lead scoring. So you have your customer base uh, and you can apply uh, different scores to attributes of your customer list. You have a, your positive attributes and your negative attributes. And so you wanna make sure that um, a score is applied to everyone in your database and uh, so that you can market the right content to them in their stage of the buyer's journey. 
So our agenda today is we're going to be talking about how this process of predictive lead scoring improves your relationships with not only your database, but also your sales team, because you're helping cultivate those relationships with your database, moving them through the different stages of the buying process, and handing them over to your salespeople when they're ready to, to really find a solution. There's been a problem identified and the salespeople have a solution to help address that problem. So there's a process to that. And uh, so the process to that is setting up the proper workflows within your CRM systems uh, so that you can keep in touch with the uh, particular prospect, whether that workflow be when a prospect hits a page on your website, the salesperson gets an email. Uh, maybe the salesperson that you know what page the, the prospect hits on your website. So the salesperson says, calls that prospect, doesn't say, I know you just hit my website, but they have some insight that that prospect is fully engaged. Maybe they've hit your website 15, 20 times and they're super interested. And when you get them in that, um, t that the time frame that it, they're, you know, searching and, and trying to learn and you help move them along, then you're going to push them along in the uh, buyer's process. So you're nurturing that the right contact, right contacts at the right time with the right type of information. Uh, you can use social media streams to connect with your database. So uploading a database of your contacts into Twitter, for instance, um, and, and seeing what their if they're even active on Twitter. And if they are active on Twitter, then you can respond, like, and share what they are sharing out there. And then they start to see, oh, um, this company is engaged with me and I've engaged with them and they're really paying attention to what I'm doing on social media. Uh, and then that's easy for you to put the right, in front, right information that's in, in front of that prospect for their stage in the uh, buyer's process. So we're also going to talk about reporting based on predictive lead score. So next slide here. Okay, so let's talk about improving your relationship with your sales team. So what we do here is we give each of your prospects a score. Um, and this allows your salespeople to prioritize their time. So it's kind of, it's, we're taking away that crystal ball effect um, of who should I call for your salespeople, but we're putting a nice organized list in front of them every day um, based on the historical behavior of the prospects in your database. And we're m modeling the prospects at, in your database out, off of the, the, customers that you've had success with in the past. So this helps those salespeople prioritize time. Um, once you implement your predictive lead scoring, you will need to send those leads to the salespeople. Um, and, and, and this is the time when they're most likely to purchase. You want those salespeople to be engaged with those uh, prospects when they're most likely to purchase. And you can tell when they're most likely to purchase based on past buyer behavior. So you can immediately send your salespeople with high lead scores, um, but wait on the medium to lower lead scores until they've been nurtured more and may be more likely to purchase. So your salespeople are only focused on that low hanging fruit, which all salespeople love. I know when I was a salesperson, I loved that low hanging fruit. Um, so this is just the most effective use of the salesperson's time. And us as ERP organizations, we've learned that, you know, you might not have time to even have a salesperson on staff. So maybe it's the um, owner of the ERP consulting business that is doing most of the sales. So if you can define a predictive lead scoring procedure um, within your inbound marketing software or your CRM, then uh, you can only work on those 10 to 20 hottest leads and prioritize your time around them because they have the, the highest likelihood to close and focus on their behavior interaction, interacting with your company 
and um, making sure you're always in touch with nurturing those uh, contacts and let the medium and lower lead scores just be automated with the nurturing system, um, sending them the right types of information via email, but you're focused proactively on the higher lead scores. Um, it, you can also run a report to see who owns the most qualified leads in your database or if you might need to reassign those qualified leads to somebody else because maybe that sales rep just isn't um, closing uh, as regular as you know some other salespeople, or maybe the, the they need a different um, mind they need a different uh, um, uh, experience so you just want to change who's making contact with those prospects So next, we're going to be talking about how to set up notifications workflow. So how do you notify your internal team when a new contact inter interaction occurs with a high predictive lead score? Well, you've got all of your uh, contacts scored, and you know that you have a group set aside with a high predictive lead score. So maybe you have a piece of inbound marketing software or a CRM that can uh, mine the internet and see how your leads with this high predictive lead score are behaving. Maybe you can see uh, if they're tweeting out certain tweets or if they're visiting your website and what content on your website they're visiting. And so you can get notifications immediately when they're interacting with your company. Uh, so you want to make sure that those high predictive lead score contacts are assigned to the right salespeople and that you're acting on the interaction accordingly with those high predictive lead score contacts. So maybe you want to send welcome emails, um, send invitations to industry related events, um, send email with a white paper, just depending on where those pred high predictive lead score contacts are in the uh, buying process. Kathy, did you have anything to add here? Um, well, you know, one thing that comes to mind that I see a lot of lot more websites doing in the ERP community is having the chat um, capabilities within their website. So you go to somebody's website and a chat comes up because um, maybe they found you, but they're not sure where to go. They do have something specific they're looking for. I just think um, that complements what you're talking about. And um, I'd be curious to hear from the audience, you know, if through the chat or through the questions, if you've had any uh, success implementing um, the chat feature that we see so often on, on websites. I, I think it's just becoming more and more popular. So that's a, that's a side note, but I think you're right on. You know, in, in the back of my mind, Adrian, I'm thinking, well, gee, this is great, but can I do this when, within my existing CRM, or do I need an additional tool to start grading all those prospects that I've built up over the years? And it just depends. It depends on what add-ons you have with your CRM, but you do have to have some sort of inbound marketing technology, and we actually use HubSpot here. But there's several of them out there. There's Pardo, Marcado, Marketo. Um, um, there's also uh, Click Dimensions for Microsoft CRM. So there's several different pieces of a technology out there that will help you with this predictive lead scoring. And it's becoming more and more popular um, for those companies who have, you know, building up their database. And there's lots of, um, there's lots of, you know, contacts in, in everyone's database that maybe at one point were, were interested, but maybe they've already purchased and are no longer interested. So you want to make sure you're spending the, the time on the right kind of candidate for your solution. Um, so if we're nurturing the right contacts, then we want to um, segment our nurturing campaigns by the stage of the buyer's journey that they're in. So, you know, if they're in the awareness stage, the consideration stage, or the decision stage. And so here's, you know, an example of the buyer's journey. Um, 
those in the awareness stage, if we uh, use the analogy of a sore throat, you know, when we're when we're we're all aware when we have a sore throat, we it does it's not comfortable. We have pain. Um, so then, you know, we go to the doctor, and we the doctor says you have strep throat. Um, so you ask, well, doctor, what are my options? Because I need to know how to get rid of this sore throat. It's really bothering me. Um, so the doctor uh, tells you that you should see a primary care physician, a ER nurse, um, and that costs dollars. And so the decision stage person is out there looking for what that doctor told them to do. So they might be um, calling because they have a doctor or they know who to call, or they might go on the internet saying, hey, how do I get rid of the strep throat? I don't want to be on a bunch of drugs. I want to do a home remedy, remedy, whatever, you know. So these are just different examples of buyers in uh, uh, the buyer's journey and different stages within the buyer's journey. And th we can use this for ERP software, right? Um, I know that um, I'm not, my accounts receivable is way out of date. Um, I'm not getting paid on average, you know, 90 days out. Um, my cash flow is wearing thin. Um, what can I do? Uh, so then they might call, they might look on the internet for an accounts receivable special. They might call some ERP consultants and they might have some suggestions on how to remedy that solution. Uh, so the same thing can go for, you know, ERP software. Everyone's in, in their own um, journey and at their own stage in the process. So if we can map out our um, content library based on what stage the um, buyer is in in the process, then we can get them the right content to align with their considerations, right? Uh, so, you know, maybe in the awareness stage, we're just talking about, um, you know, sore throats and what causes sore throats. And in the consideration stage, we're talking about um, possible remedies to that sore throat. And then in the decision stage, they know what they want, they know they need a certain type of medicine, so they go to the store and they buy it because they did their research, they know exactly that they have a sore throat and or a strep throat, and they know what they need. They need some penicillin, so they're gonna go get that penicillin to get rid of that sore throat. So here's an example of a content audit worksheet. Um, so somebody in the awareness stage um, might be interested in, you know, white papers. Um, the, they're in the awareness stage, they, they're aware they have an accounts receivable problem. Uh, maybe they're gonna go out there on the internet and find um, white papers to help them speed up uh, their cash flow collection um, because, you know, it's really hurting their business. Maybe they're not making payroll because the cash flow is so tight. Um, so they're out there researching how they can do it really on their own. So they're, they're trying to figure it out. Um, so the right types of information to serve to them are going to be educational in, um, in nature. So we're just educating them and we're earning their credibility, earning our credibility during this awareness stage. So when they move to the consideration stage, now we're telling them how to uh, collect accounts receivable faster. Maybe we're offering up tools that can help them speed up that process. Um, and then in the decision stage, we give them a trial on, uh, you know, a 40 day trial on how to use the software. Uh, in, in, in accounts receivable, that might be easier to do than a full-blown ERP system, but those in the decision stage might want to try out the software. They might want you to come to their office and give them a full-blown demonstration with their data 
um, but those guys are in the decision stage, but you move them from the awareness stage through the consideration stage to the decision stage by earning their credibility with the content and the blogs and the uh, white papers and the landing pages, the webinars that you're having, you're moving them through the process and then now they're finally ready to buy. And if somebody buys ERP software, it's all worth it, right? Because you've gone through this journey with them and now they're ready to um, pay a pretty considerable amount to remedy their problem because you're the expert who's taken them through the buyer's journey and you've proven that you can implement a solution for them based on the blogs you've written, the webinars you've had, and the white papers you've syndicated through the internet, and they know that they've selected the right ERP provider to either offer them a trial or a full-blown demonstration with their demo data, take them through a business process analysis. You've earned their respect and now they're going to go with you. But you have, you've done all of this by understanding who to focus this type of information on because you know, if you have a database of 40,000 contacts, you need some way to understand who, what information to send to which one of those contacts. And you know, they're all across the board in their stages of their buying process and they all, different, they all have different pain. So you wanna identify their pain, you wanna identify what stage they are in the buyer process, and you wanna make sure you're in front of them with the information that they seek. So, um, so you can use social media streams to connect with these um, high predictive lead score pro prospects. Um, so with automation tools like HubSpot, but there are several of them, you can um, create a Twitter stream and with HubSpot, you can pull in um, any list that you've created in HubSpot. You can pull in that entire list into Twitter and you can see which ones have a Twitter account, which ones have been active in Twitter, and you can just interact with them. And um, it just, it, it, it siphons out the ones that are not active and it only gives you the ones that are active. So maybe you have, you know, a thousand high predictive lead score prospects that you want to interact with, um, like the, the, um, the VARs that we invited today. Uh, we have a, over a thousand and we could pull all of you into a um, Twitter stream where we're interacting with you on Twitter um, and, you know, we're helping you by introducing your contacts or content to our um, Twitter followers and vice versa. So it really helps leverage the relationship when everyone's you know, connected in social media and actually collaborating together. So you wanna include your medium predictive lead contacts in your database maybe for that um, because you know, that is automated and if you don't have thousands and thousands of medium leads and you just have a handful, then you can still interact with those medium predictive lead score leads. Uh, you want to monitor da daily and you want to make sure that you show that you appreciate them and you appreciate interacting with them um, and make and you know share the content with them that they um, would be most interested in receiving based on their stage of the buyer's journey. So we want to report based on their predictive lead score. So um, when you go to Netflix, uh, and you have a certain, you know, watching behavior, uh, Netflix applies their algorithm or their rules to serve you up the type of movies that you might be interested in based on your past behavior. So that's the same thing that we're talking about here with predictive lead scoring. We're gonna serve up the content based on, their, on our contacts past behavior. If they sign up for warehouse management uh, webinars, then we wanna make sure that they're on our invitation list to um, sign up for future warehouse management webinars. And we want to make sure that we have that consistent content flowing so that we can continue to connect and stay in front of that interested high predictive lead score prospect. 
So YouTube and Netflix, they leverage analytics to identify those movies that you want to watch. Same thing here. They consider the genre, rating, length, etc. So what we consider with our ERP software leads are size of company maybe, um, employee count, um, how many of our emails they might have opened, how many of our webinars they might have attended, how many uh, white papers they downloaded, and what type of content they're interacting with on our website. Um, so predictive lead scoring uses the, all, that, all those pieces of information to compare against your customers in your database and the leads that you've lost in your database to assign a number to everyone in your database, every single contact in your database. So in summary, what does this all do? Well, it helps eliminate doubt for the salespeople, it helps cut away the weeds to focus on the low hanging fruit. Um, it just, you can discover what works with understanding recurring buyer behaviors. It aligns your sales team with your marketing teams, which is very important. And marketing can prove ROI easier because it's handing off the leads that are much high, with a much higher likelihood to close. And it also eliminates that human error with the manual aspect of weighing and guessing. So what I was gonna do is just do a quick demo right now of how we would do it this using HubSpot there we go. So in HubSpot, and I can see that several of you out there use HubSpot because I've talked with you before, so hopefully this helps you. Um, but you go to contacts, and then you go to lead scoring. And I have an example here. Um, in order to use the HubSpot algorithm and the HubSpot predictive lead scoring, attributes you have to be on the enterprise edition of hubspot but you do get the manual lead scoring with the basic um, edition or the professional edition so um, here we've set up uh, a um, basic you know manual lead scoring system where i'm guessing what to attribute to particular contacts in our database so our target market at ERP VAR are the resellers of the ERP software. So we want to identify with you. Um, we want you to understand that we, under, we understand inbound marketing and we apply the inbound marketing principles to what we do on ERPVAR.com. So at a minimum, we hope that you interact with us and, and participate on our ERP VAR community because we're applying you know, all these attributes to to ERPVAR.com, um, but you know we also would love to help you manage your inbound marketing processes as well. So um, we, we just so happen to use HubSpot to do that. So here is a manual lead scoring example. So I've indicated that a contact in our database is registered for any webinar. So I've given that a positive attribute of 20. Um, and then I used the predictive lead score that I was able to understand from the pre predictive lead scoring tab here, which I'll show you in a minute. But I've used the predictive lead score of over 51 in resellers, so that's another positive attribute. And I've set that at 20. And then um, I've also indicated the life cycle stage is equal to customer. And then here is um, a negative attribute, right? I could add several negative at attributes. I could say, um, has never visited our website. So this is gonna mine every contact in our database and it's gonna give them a HubSpot score. So if I just use a uh, contact that I know that's in our database as a test contact, um, I'll show you uh, how that particular contact um, uh, appears or what their score is. So I'm going to test a contact and I'm going to say um, this is a, a reseller that I know that we have in our system and let's see what her score is. So if I test Annette, she um, is a member 
of hard bounces and ineligibles. She is not a customer because I've just made her an evangelist because she's a reseller. I switched my customers to evangelists. Um, and her, she doesn't have a predictive lead score of over 51. So let's go and um, look at her contact record in HubSpot. Okay, so her predictive lead score is 52, but her, and, and so that might have just recently changed. Um, but her HubSpot score, so let's look at her HubSpot score. So it's negative 10. So that's what we just tested against. Her HubSpot score is negative 10. So if I wanted to say that um, I wanted to keep um, Annette into a um, awareness stage contact, um, I would just build. So HubSpot, HubSpot score of uh, negative 2. So I just build a list based on, so now I create a new list. And I base that new list on contact property, HubSpot score, it's HubSpot score here. So I create a list in my database of a HubSpot score is um, equal to negative 10. So let's see how many of Annette's I have in my database out there. Um, contacts with Annette. Uh, score. So let's just see how many I have with a negative 10 score. So now I'm going to build the list of those contacts in my system with a negative 10. Annette just so happens to be a customer, but I changed her to an ev evangelist. But I do have, you know, all these com customers here or, or prospects rather um, that have the same type of score as a net. So now when I build my nurturing programs, I can build them and build a, a nurturing program based on a net. I know a net, a net's very sweet lady. She's a um, sage uh, a reseller out of Kentucky. She also represents NetSuite. And um, I can have her in mind when I'm building my nurturing programs but I'm building my nurturing programs with her in mind, but I'm talking to all these people with my nurturing programs as a reseller. So my nurturing programs might consist of these webinars that we have. And so I always make sure that uh, these 84, this list of 84 with the NETS attributes are being sent invitations with when, and I'm creating those invitations for these webinars with Annette in, in my mind, what Annette might want to see or receive. So these are all resellers, and they're you know with the same score as Annette. So that's manual lead scoring. But if I want HubSpot's algorithm, if I want to use HubSpot's algorithm, then I and HubSpot's is going to be much more advanced than mine because mine I'm just sticking my finger in the air to assign a score to each of these con each of these areas. So if I wanted to have HubSpot give me a score, I would go into predictive lead scoring and see that I have 54% of my contacts are um, above or 51. Um, and then I have 7% of my contacts who are, you know, have a high predictive lead score. So most of our contacts in here are, are, are ERP contacts. Who've, so this, this really is uh, understanding who um, has opened our emails, who've signed up for our webinars, who've completed forms on our pages. Um, so these are our hottest prospects for ERP software. Um, obviously, you know, we want to uh, work with our readers sellers to make sure that these prospects are in touch with the right reseller to offer their expert information. But I see that a lot of my database is spam. And so that's going to be this 39% here. So I could go in and I could make a list score of less than 51 and just get rid of these guys because they're not engaging with us. So that's 17,000. They might have they might have filled out a form at one time, but maybe it was two years back and they um, 
decided to unsubscribe from our future events or what have you, have you, but they're just not engaged with us. Maybe they moved companies, um, but you know, I could get rid of these guys in our database. HubSpot recommends that you stay, you keep them because it keeps their historical information, like you know, whatever they've ever signed up for, whatever web pages they've looked at. If they visit your website again and you ever want to be notified, then you know you're still tracking them. But I want to, you know, really focus on these guys and make sure that um, I'm segmenting the database based on their interests. Uh, and that's how I can use predictive lead scoring and maybe their SIC codes, maybe the different webinars that they've set, um, they've attended, maybe the landing pages that they've completed. Uh, but here it tells me the most influential attributes of uh, the, the buyer behavior. So the number of page uh, views is greater than nine. Um, most of these guys are direct traffic coming right to our website. Um, and then a uh, number of unique forms submitted. That means they've, they've filled out some sort of form on our website. So this all helps with understanding what to send to them and segmenting them in different lists based on their um, demographic information, you know, maybe we could use their zip code to do some sort of local mailing with an ERP bar. Maybe we can um, look at the industry they're in to make sure we invite them to uh, manufacturing related events if they're a manufacturer. So we're segmenting our high predictive lead scores based on the types of events that they might want to attend, and we're also considering what stage they are in in the buyer's process. So, um, Kathy, do we have any questions? We have a special guest who attended through uh, while you were talking, Adrian. It is Don Yeager. First of all, thank you. I think it's great. We're very happy to co-sponsor these marketing events, and um, I'm sure they're helpful to everybody who attends. And and you get to learn a lot. That's for sure. So, and, and I think um, it's always good for me too, because I know Acumatica has an integration with HubSpot. So we're, we're in the process of automating that right now and, and we'll be taking more uh, full advantage of the solution as well. So no, other right. than that, I just wanted to uh, I'll just briefly say, Don Jager, Director of Partner Recruiting. And if anybody's interested in Acumatica, you can certainly reach out to me or um, Adrian and Kathy and they can get them in touch. But we really appreciate the participation and, and thanks ladies for a good job. Thank you so much, Don. Um, do you know of um, many of your VARs out there that are actually using the HubSpot integration with um, Acumatica or even just HubSpot? Uh, you know, I know there are a couple that do. And in fact, enough, there are several of them that I think are working with you also to help help them determine what their marketing strategy should be when it comes to HubSpot. But I believe there are a couple and, and I think there are also some others using tools that are, that are similar to HubSpot. So I think the marketing automation tools in general are becoming more and more popular, especially as companies have automated their CRM solution. And it, it certainly dovetails nicely into leveraging CRM and, and really having a better understanding of who your audience is so you can speak directly to them. I know we talked in prior um, webcasts about buying personas and so forth, but when you can combine really knowing who you're speaking with and be able to give them the right content at the right time based on their role and how they've reacted to you up until this point, I think you get much greater engagement and likelihood that they're going to be responding to any of the the offers that you send out there through social media and other avenues. Mm -hmm. And you guys, you guys are using HubSpot there over at Acumatica too, too, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were using a different automation tool a year or two ago, and we started using HubSpot. But I think, like like many companies, you you might automate your CRM first, and naturally, we're using Acumatica's um, not only our financials but our CRM for running our business, but we, we didn't have a good connection between 
Acumatica CRM and the HubSpot marketing automation piece. So that's something that we've um, developed and, and just kind of turned on. We're in the process now, just at the very, very beginning of syncing up, which is I think the biggest challenge really is, is to sync up records that you may have in Hub, HubSpot with records that you may already have in your CRM so that you're not overriding one with the other and you're picking the, the database that's likely to have the most um, accurate information and then merging the two so you're you're updating records as you go. And I know there's a way to do that. That's what we're working through right now, but we expect we're gonna turn on that integration pretty soon. And that's, that's really exciting. I think that's gonna give us a, a much greater response rate and visibility with not only our prospects, but our customers as well. And to that note, um, I just wanna um, inform the audience that there is a poll up here. If we could just get you to answer that poll, that would be awesome. Take a second of your time just to um, answer. Are you interested in learning more about any of the following? Check all that apply. So you can uh, click on more than just one, but um, if you're interested in participating on ERPVAR.com, we would love to, to talk with you further. Um, learn a little bit more about predictive lead scoring. We'll give you a call and um, help coach you through it as it applies to your individual situation because everyone's situation is unique. And if you're interested in learning more about HubSpot, we'd love to give you a call. Um, and if you're not interested in learning more at this time, then that is fine as well. And um, we're going to be sending um, information for Dawn to everyone who registered for this. So. Um, Acumatica is taking a very proactive role in helping um, partners market and uh, use the tools within Acumatica to, to help them um, get more business. And I can see just uh, such a value with an integration with something like HubSpot, Don, if the um, resellers or the bars or the um, end customers can see that they've closed a business, business um, through ERP VAR, maybe from a Google search, maybe from a social media syndication, um, they can attribute the amount of dollars that were closed to that particular customer, and then that will tie back to lead scoring, and it'll all be integrated in one dashboard where you can just see all of that, and that's what happens when you have your CRM your um, ERP and your inbound marketing tool all connected because they're all feeding off of each other and sending the right information back and forth to help you predict, you know, uh, the future of your business based on uh, predictive lead scoring. Yeah, that's, uh, we're definitely looking at working more toward getting there. I think any company that's really serious about this needs to have your eye on the ball of, of how to leverage systems because I think we all know that in the past, the ways we might have marketed that were successful either through direct mail or telemarketing or, or even emails, some of these things are just not as effective as they used to be. And, and to find a way to leverage social more and, and be, be in front of people at the right time. It also, I think one of those marketing rules, I've heard different numbers, but if you have to touch a customer or prospect, you know, 10, 15, 17 times to make the first impression that then causes them to take some action and expressed interest in your product, any tools that you can use that help you do that more efficiently, just I think gives you a better opportunity, especially as, as opposed to people that are not doing that. So, so I think that's why we've really taken a hard look and our new CMO is squarely behind these types of initiatives. And that's, that's again, why we wanted to sponsor these seminars for, for partners to become more savvy about how they do their own lead generation too. And that can definitely uh, differentiate um, Acumatica from the other ERP vendors because you're such a new cutting edge ERP that you're able to have these open-ended integrations, um, cloud-based integrations with other cloud-based providers like HubSpot to leverage their technology to differentiate your solution in selling it to an end user. It's like an end-to-end -end solution that's only right. available in like a cloud environment. Right, right, exactly. 
Well, I've just appreciated since we set this predictive lead scoring up that I get emails and they'll say, here's a medium lead, here's a hot lead. And it just triggers me to say, wow, that prospect I talked to uh, a year ago is coming back to our website and maybe that's a proactive um, call that we should make because there are somehow and just to have that visibility is pretty awesome with this tool. So hopefully this tool is available to you all with the systems that you have. If it's not, we're happy to engage with you. I don't see any questions um, at this time. So um, this to a, a lot of, of people is a, a new concept or a new way of filtering through all the people in the system who may or may not be interested, but I sure do appreciate those proactive alerts. And um, thank you so much, Dawn, for uh, co-hosting this with us. And oh, um, we hope to engage in further conversations with all of you that attended. We'll be following up with a recording, so you will have this and um, more, more to come. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, Don, so much. And uh, look out for the next one. We're going to be talking about seven clickable call to actions. So we hope you join us for that. You will be receiving the invitation soon. So thank you. And everyone, take care.